But first I'd like to turn to Mark, because Mark, uh, you also, um, you're not giving away money, but you're advising folks who have money, and we'd love to hear your perspective, your story, and, and how it relates to the report, too. Well, thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth, and thanks to the Sacklers and all the other organizations that are supporting this activity. I was glad to see that many of our members are among the supporters, including the Reed Allen Foundation. <clears throat> um, let me say a couple of words about the uh, Science Philanthropy Alliance. Um, the alliance was formed around uh, 2013. In many ways, it was a response to the beginning of cutbacks in federal funding for basic research in the nat natural sciences. That funding had actually been quite generous given the constraints on the federal budget until that time, but it's really been declining since. Um, and um, a number of the organizations that support basic science philanthropically got together and asked what they could do as a group that they weren't doing individually quickly decided that the mission should be to increase philanthropy for basic research in the natural sciences. So the mission was clear, but the strategy was difficult to uh, d d decide upon. Um, and after meeting with uh, 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 quite a few w very wealthy individuals and their representatives, we realized that there was a need for uh, advice to philanthropists on how to support science effectively. Uh, and so that's really our strategy. And so our primary uh, focus of our communications is actually a very narrow segment of the population, those who have enormous wealth and are able to really influence science uh, uh, research in a significant way. On the other hand, uh, our member organizations, and, and we've grown from the original six to now 21 uh, member organizations, um, many of them, I would say most of them, have science communication as, as part of their missions. And they uh, ask us often to convene um, uh, uh, fora in, in, in order to figure out how are, what are the best things to do. Um, gratifyingly, some of the newest philanthropists really think that uh, uh, exciting the public about uh, basic science is really a central part of their mission. Um, and so um, we think that, that the, this report is just wonderful because it emphasizes uh, what we think is the crucial uh, thing to do, which is to, to, to develop uh, experiments and do research which really tells us what works. Um, uh, one of the uh, uh, activities that I think is most exciting is Science Counts. Uh, which has conducted surveys of the public and has found uh, that the public really thinks science is wonderful and they love it, it's just not a very high priority. And so now they're trying to, to, to uh, canvas the public to see what could make it a higher priority. Um, uh, they, they think that uh, motivation, uh, the motivation of fear doesn't work very well with the public uh, and that motivations of hope would be more effective. Um, on the other hand, uh, because government funding is always going to be the primary uh, support for basic science research, um, uh, I, I think personally, I believe that fear actually works with the government. It may not work with the public. Um, uh, but I think that, that this kind of experimentation to find out what works with what audience is really, really critical. So let me stop there. Well, and let me build on that. Uh, the importance of having networks of uh, funders or others around the table to be dealing with some of these common problems. Dealing with basic research, you have some, some uh, different challenges trying to convey and get other people involved in basic research, partly because you have a long and, and unpredictable time frame. So um, I believe Joe Palka is in the, in the audience too, and he has spoken at our plenary last year, as you did too, of our biomedical scholars. And Joe startled everyone at one point when he said, we don't lead with the facts. 
And what he meant to say is we lead with the stories. And so that's something you've done too as you've tried to build a case for basic research. And how are you finding that uh, in terms of being effective way to, to communicate? So we have done that. Uh, we, we commissioned uh, a number of stories that we call science to society stories, which are histories of how very basic science has really uh, led to technologies and uh, therapies which have improved people's lives. Um, we've also commissioned a set of stories about opportunities for supporting basic research where uh, a philanthropist could really make a huge difference. Um, uh, I have to say that they haven't had a huge impact on the philanthropists we're talking to. Um, but of course, we're talking to people who are already interested in basic science, and they're interested in it for a variety of reasons. Um, we have one philanthropist who, who really wants to excite the public uh, about ocean exploration. Uh, and uh, that's his primary motivation. He's looking for science that he could do which would really excite the public. Um, I think the wonderful thing is we are meeting very wealthy people who are highly motivated to support basic research. Um, and um, they need our help and uh, we're communicating with them uh, about very effective ways of doing it and we're convening people who, who've learned from their own experiences how to do it effectively. So I'll also build on the fact that you're bringing people together to share best practices. You're bringing together the communication um, staff of these yes. uh, funding organizations or philanthropists. And also you brought Science Counts to actually speak to a members meeting, which then uh, a number of folks uh, helped uh, support. And Science Counts now, I guess, is, is uh, dealing with some of the language. Uh, when they talk about basic research, uh, people like to hear um, about uh, that it's leading to something hopeful, that uh, it's more about discovery. And I think they're also testing in various um, uh, parts of our country so they have different kinds of audience um, understanding of, of what uh, people value too as, as they're uh, thinking about uh, that too. So there, there's a great value, isn't there, as, as you're doing this. Are you also finding some differences between some of the people who've been longer term funders of, of science versus some of the newer uh, folks? Ab absolutely. Uh, um, uh, the the, the well-established foundations, um, they, they have a longer range view. Uh, they, uh, they already have a track record and they, uh, they have pretty clear ideas of what they want to do. Um, many of the new philanthropists are just beginning. Many, some of them now are very young uh, and um, they're really, they really want to learn from others. So as you said, I think uh, a very important thing that we can do is bring them together with uh, more established organizations that have a track record. And again, that builds on the theme that we're going to need to have people from different sectors and, and coming together to be working on these problems.